Welcome everyone, I'm Joe DeLoneWear and today I'm winterizing my sprinkler system. So let's get started. So if you've been following my channel, you know that I don't have a conventional underground sprinkler system. I installed it myself using funny pipe, regular rainbird valves, things like that. I actually put a manifold in myself and I have my easy flow system hooked up to my sprinkler system as well. So let me show you how I'm winterizing my system today. So what you need is, is obviously a compressor right here. I have a co cobalt right here, a compressor to two gallon compressor one horsepower i use this to get my blades on and off my lawnmower i've used it for many years i used it last year as well to blow out my sprinkler system one of the key things is i always turn this all the way up the pressure when i go to blow out the sprinkler system so as you can see i have a line right here this is a really long hose line right here i have it hooked into my uh, garage or plugged into my garage and then what we'll do is, is we'll come over to the first uh, sprinkler section right here and I'll show you what I have going on right here. So I'll be out of frame on this picture right here, but I just wanted to show you my hookup. Obviously this is the manifold system that I built myself. It's just out of three quarter uh, PVC as you can see here. I have my hose hooked up here. Then I have each of the valves. So what I'm doing is, is I have the hose running and then I'm turning on each of the valves on my Ratio app. And then what I'm gonna do at the end is just unclip them from the manifold here. You can see my funny pipelines back there. They run out to my sprinkler system. Like, you, like I said, this is not your conventional system. I built this myself. Uh, I won't ever probably do this ever again, um, but I learned to do it myself. I don't mind digging trenches. Um, it works for me. Um, it's a lot easier than bringing out sprinklers and hoses. So that's what we're doing. We got it hooked up, running the hose through it, and that's what we're doing. So this part is really loud right now, but you can see I got the compressor running right now. And then I come over to this sprinkler head right here. And you can see there's pretty much, there's, there's no water coming out. It's, it's all just air, so I know I got all the water out of the line, which is great. Hopefully you guys can hear this. If not, I'll do a voiceover on it. But you can see no more water left coming out of these MP rotators right here. So here's the, the finished product here. I have everything disconnected from the funny pipes. I use these uh, adapters here just to make it easier to connect it to the, the valves right here. And one more thing that I made sure I did was I made sure I blew out my drip irrigation. That's what that line is in the back. It runs over here and then underground to the various shrubs that I have. So I definitely make sure I always blow that out just in case you never know. It's really easy just to hook it, hook it right up to there and blow everything out. And then I'm just gonna leave this manifold here and I have a cover for it and I'll just put the cover right back on it and just let this sit over the winter time. So over on this side of my house, I have a couple different things going on. That's the main sprinkler line that comes out and that feeds to the valve box right here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, is I'm gonna put my adapter, this is my adapter for my hose, I'm gonna put it on the end of there and then blow it out first through there. And then what I'll do is, is I'm gonna disconnect each one of these from the valves and then blow them out each separately just to make sure I get all the water line out. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the easy flow, drain it out so I have it for next year. And then at the top here, over here, I have a sprinkler hooked up to the melanoma right here, and then the rainbird is my drip irrigation that runs out to my garden. So basically that line just comes down and it feeds all the way around to the back to the garden. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna definitely blow out that line back there as well. And make sure we put these timers in a nice spot so we can use them next year. So you can see I have the line coming in. I have the compressor on right now to the highest setting. I have it connected right to the manifold as you can see and then what I'm doing is I'm going on my ratio app and then just turning on each zone and then it's just pushing the water out of the lines as you can see over here so this presser is strong enough as you can see definitely strong enough to get this water out of these lines and these lines are only a half inch so really it doesn't take much pressure at all to get them out you're only got a half inch uh, funny pipe that you're going through so you can see that one's done already and the one over by my truck 
is already done as well. And then we got the compressor right here out front with the line going right to the manifold. So the next thing I always do is I make sure I take off my timers, make sure I have them on the off position. And sometimes you can even take out the batteries if you really want to conserve them. I've had them let them sit over the winter time and they've been fine the following season. So as you can see, I have my line going into my drip irrigation and we're gonna fire up the compressor and let the air come out of the drip irrigation now. So the compressor is on, the drip irrigation is running. Just so, just so you guys can see in various spots, you can see it, the little flood one here is coming out, which is great. We're gonna go into the backyard now. These have drip emitters in them, and then you can even hear it, if I can find one. These are bubbling out, which is great. That's what we want. This line out over here. So everything is looking really good so far. Everything, air's flowing through, that's what we want. You can hear it in the various spots that you can hear the water coming out of the lines. Here's another one of these half inch lines. You can see the water starting is coming out of this line as well. So we're gonna let this run for about a minute because this line's pretty long, especially that half inch line. Had that half inch line goes up into each three of these raised beds that we have right here. And then that half inch line runs underground along the fence line here back out the fence and over to where our connections are with the Rainbird water timer. So once I blow out everything with the valves turned on through the end of the manifold right here, what I do next is, is I disconnect each one of the funny pipes from their valve. I have these adapters just like I had on the other side of my house. And then what I do is, is I put my connection now into each of these funny pipes right here and then just blow them out one more time and then we're done for the season. So that's it, we're done, the season's over. This adapter goes a really long way with, with my system, the way I designed it and built it myself. Again, I would not design it or build it like this. I would probably get a conventional underground system if I ever got another house again or redid it again, which I don't plan on redoing. But this adapter goes a long way with what I did here. So that's pretty much it for today's video. As you can see, my system's not conventional. I just wanted to show you guys how I winterized my system. I did the same thing last year with the same system that I had. I didn't have a regular uh, timer system with a Ratio app. I just had the Melnor water timer, the four port on this side of my house. And on the other side of my house, I had the two port system. I blew them out exactly the same way last year. And obviously this year I didn't have any problems. It's everything started right back up. That funny pipe didn't freeze, didn't break, crack or anything like that underground. If I could do it over again, of course I would do it completely different. I would probably have a traditional system in my house, but I like doing things myself. That's why I'm a DIYer at heart. That's why I did it this way. And again, I would never do it again the same way. Just one more thing I did. I did put a cover back here on the manifold. As you can see, it's just a traditional sprinkler box cover. I will be leaving this hose reel out for just a little bit longer. I like to wash my cars myself. So I'll probably leave that out for another month or two. And then if things get really cold and I start to see problems, I will take it and I can easily just take it off the, the uh, post back there and I can take it into my garage or in my shed in my backyard. So just a quick video here for you guys today. I just wanted to show you how I winterize my sprinkler system. Again, it's not the most conventional system. So if you have any questions or concerns on my system, if you're curious how I built it, or if you have any questions on what I did here today, leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. And if you found today's content helpful today, make sure you smash that like button. It really does help out with the channel. It helps people find the videos on my channel and my channel as well. And like always, I'll see you in the next one.